What's going on guys? One love out to everybody. We got Bellator 272, Pettis versus Haraguchi. This is actually a good Bellator card here guys. This matchup here with Pettis and Haraguchi is a pretty good fight man. Both guys are really skilled technical fighters here, right? Um, I'm gonna fly through this real quick guys, not gonna spend too long on this card. I'm only breaking down 10 fights on this card. Um, Justin Maletalvo and Jacob Bowman. I'm not going to be doing that fight, guys. All right. Um, there has been some changes to up and down with Don Morick fight and John D. Zeus. So, been like one or two changes here. All right. Just knock this out. I know I haven't been here in a bit because we didn't have any fights last week. Also, guys, before I get started, hit the thumbs up button. Smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to this channel. Also, if you want to. You can also donate to this channel if you want, all right? And also, check out my Patreon account for all the face-off predictions, prop bets, and combination parlays, which I'm going to be leaving the face-off predictions on my Patreon account, all right? I'm going to look at the wins and face-off after this, all right? After this, too, I'm going to knock out, finish up the UFC. That's going to be on Saturday, okay? I believe that's the John, um, the John Font, the Rob Font, and Aldo. Right, so I'm gonna knock that out also. So let's jump on this, guys. Get this party started. <laughs> First fight here, we got Kyle Kuchumacher versus Oliver Enkamp. Kyle here um, has a wrestling base there, man. Um, kind of AKA train with a lot of guys over there, like Habib and um, DC, right? Um, very explosive takedowns. Um, he will also gas out, which I noticed in one of his fights here when he was fighting Cameron, but. In his other fights, he doesn't really gas out as much. And he wasn't really going for takedowns in the Cameron fight. He wanted to stand up more. But his stand-up is not too bad. But his strong point, his foundation is his wrestling, right? Um, he has a quick double leg on him. And like, like I said, he will also strike. And his striking doesn't look bad, right? Um, his opponent here, Oliver Enkamp. Remember, remember, Oliver Enkamp was in the UFC. Way back there for uh, Nodim Talib and Donnie Roberts, right? Um... He's going to have a 9 inch of freaking reach on him. 9 inch of reach. And he has a karate base on him, so I mean, he should be able to can use that 9 inch of reach. He knows distance in a range, so he should know that, right? Um, and he has a, six, um, a 3 inch of height, but he has 6 by submission. So majority of this guy's wins are by submission. And I think he's more doing like a George St. Pierre kind of game planning. Remember, George St. Pierre has a more of a karate stand-up, but then he was kind of going back, you know, he, he was trying to pick up the wrestling more because he got hurt in that fight um, when he fought. Um, who did he fight in that fight? He fought and got knocked out in that fight against some guy. I forgot his name. Um, what is his name again? Ah, I can't remember his name right now, guys. Um, uh, Matt Sarah, right? And Matt Sarah clipped him, all, <laughs> clipped him on top of his head and he got knocked out because he wanted to stand up a lot. So I believe after he lost to Danny Roberts, he started to implement more of a kind of a wrestling, more of a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu kind of game plan now where he uses striking to set up the takedowns. So this is a guy that wants to take the fight to the ground and look for submissions. And he's going to be doing that against Kyle, who's a strong AKA wrestler who knows about submissions, who knows how to defend the submissions. So he's not really going to really stand up and strike like that. At least I don't feel so. I mean, he could, though. And he has some wins by knockouts. But in my opinion, his stand-up, I mean, he's open to get hit, man. He's open to get caught. And we saw that against um, Danny Roberts. And that's why it's implementing more of the ground game, right? Um, let me see here. Like I said, he's taking a book out, book out of George St. Pierre, game plan there. Um, uh, I mean, end camp he's, he's not a bad fighter. His ground game doesn't look bad, actually. And he will put a submission on you quickly. He's very crafty on the ground. And his reach, his length, he's a very long, tall guy, man. And he'll have a 9-inch reach over Kyle, man. But, man, Kyle wrestling is dominant. And what I see from end camp, he can get taken down. But he will look for submissions, though, but he can get put on his back. And then he will look for submissions off his back. So this is a fight where I could see end camp maybe submitting Kyle. It's a strong possibility. So this one, guys, is a toss-up. I'm liking Kyle for this for more the crafty, grindy wrestler. And Enkamp's, you know, he may stand up, but he can get hit with shots, man. Even though he had a 9 inch reach, he seems like he just doesn't want to stand up for too long, you know, because he can't get hurt on the feet. So he wants to grind, grind, grind. So I'm liking Kyle for this one, but I'm not confident. And I can see Enkamp getting a submission, man. So be careful with this one. But I'm going to say Kyle, guys, by decision. All right. Next fighter, we got Spike 
um, Carly versus Dan Moritz. Short notice for Spiker. Um, Sp Spiker, um, he has a wrestling base here, um, heavy handed guy, um, but he will gas out on him. But look, like he's been working on that. If you notice him from the UFC here, he has some decision wins, but, and he, you know, obviously he lost by decision. But, <laughs> but um, I mean, most of his fights here, if you can see, he's usually finishing his fights, right? So basically, I could be wrong here for you. Yeah, he has one by decision here. So he does go to decisions, but not much, man. It's mostly all finishes this guy has, man. So when you see guys that just have all finishes, you know that usually they may get out in the fight. But with Spike here, look like he's been working on the cardio a little bit. He's not exploding. He used to explode a lot in the first round to try to finish it real quick. But he's been working on that a little bit, right? He has four by submission, very explosive, athletic guy. IQ could be poor at times, man. That's that's what I mentioned. He just explode in the first round and try to take your head off. And he turn his back and walk away and then get caught with a hit. So yeah, the fight IQ is not that great, but it looks like he's been working it a little bit. His opponent here, Moritz. Um, Dan Moritz is going to have a four inch of height. Um, he will look for submissions, eight by submissions. Um, he's going to be the more experienced guy here. But with Dan Moritz, man, he's hateable. And um, he actually lost to um, Gotti. Right, he lost to Gatti Yamayuchi here, man. He lost that fight. I don't know how the hell he got split decision, but he lost that fight. Right, I feel like, um, Yamayuchi won that fight, right? Um, Murray keep the pressure on you though, but he will slow down. And he's a guy to he's he's a guy that comes out in the first round and just explodes too. And then later on in the second, third, he's like totally tired. And when he's tired, he's done. When Spike is tired, Spike will keep on going even though he's tired. When Dan Murray is tired, he's like he's. I mean, you could see it on him. He's just laying his back. He's breathing heavy. He, his, his, his hands are heavy, he, and then he's not doing much. He becomes very inactive, right? So then this is a this is a tough one to pick because I mean, I mean both guys get tired. I mean, I mean Murray more experience. Um, I think Spike's making his debut to Bellator. I want to say that. Yep. Um, I'm going to go with Spike here, guys, but I'm not confident. And like I said, Murray is hittable. You can connect to him easily, man. Um, I'm going to go with Spike. I'm going to say Spike by KOTKO, guys, in the first round. But I'm not confident. And I was going for Murray in the beginning, but I switched it. But I could definitely see Murray winning this fight. And this fight is an even match for me, and I'm just not confident at all. I'm not confident in this match. I say Spike by KOTKO first. Not confident, guys. All right? Next fight here, we have um, Vincent Jesus versus Levin Chocaheli. Um, the Zeus here. Uh, the Zeus here is a very aggressive guy. Um, he stays on you. Push forward, a lot of heavy leg kicks. Pressure, pressure. More jujitsu guy though. You look to take you down. His scrambles are kind of good. He was scrambling to a submission, you know, maybe a knee bar. He loves to go for the legs, right? But he's hateable though on the stand-up game. Um, he can get taken down depending on his opponent. You know, um, when he fought in Asin Vendeford, he gave Asin Vendeford a little trouble in that first round, but Asin Vendeford is a strong wrestler, right? So Asin Vendeford end up taking him down. Um, like I said, he was started strong in the first round, but he will fade. But he still favors his state on those. So this is a guy that will get tired. And if he's fighting a guy that doesn't have a good ground game and can get taken down, he will give them a problem because he will keep grinding, grinding for all three rounds until he gets the decision. All right? Or even a submission. All right? His opponent here, Livon. Um, from what I see, man, Livon can't stop takedowns. I mean, that's from what I see. Again, Kyle Kuchimacher, man. He couldn't. He, he was just getting taken down, taken down, taken down. The way he strikes, he overcommit with the striking. His striking doesn't look bad, but he overcommits. And, you know, like a lot of boxers, a lot of kickboxers, when they come into the sport, they would throw the punches and kicks so wide and leave themselves so open that it's easily get taken down. You got to be, in MMA, when you're striking, you got to be, you kind of you have to be on the back foot while you're striking. Kind of like you pop your shot out there, but bring it back quicker than you put it out. You can't leave your shot out there hanging out. You can't throw recklessly and leaving your body out there because you, your hips are going to be there to get taken down. You know, your legs are going to be there to get taken down. You got to pop and move, pop and move. Everything you throw has to be in a way of like you're hitting and you're, and you're lateral moving at the same time. You're hitting and you're moving. I mean, you can sit down on your punches, but I mean, 
chances of you, you know, you're fighting a wrestler and you're sitting down your punches, most likely you can get taken down, right? So this is a guy that can get taken down, and I mean, I just, there's nothing else to say. I mean, I have to go with Jesus. I mean, can Jesus get knocked out? Yeah, it's possible, because, I mean, Chokeheli striking is not that bad from what I see, but he can't stop taking down, right? And Jesus is an experienced guy. This guy's an experienced guy, and he does a lot of grappling matches too, and he's experienced. He's more experienced than Chokeheli. So I'm going to go with um, Jesus here for the win, guys. Um, Vincisos, D. Jesus. <laughs> Hopefully I pronounced that right. I'm going to say Jesus by decision. I'm not confident because, again, anything can happen. I mean, if Jesus go for takedown and supposedly, you know, some magical thing, you know, you know that um, Choke Heli stopped the takedowns, then, hey, and then he start landing strikes and then his takedown defense just becomes really great. It happens. You know, he may, he may improve from his last fight. You just never know. Then you know Choke Hill could win. But I'm gonna go with Jesus. I'm gonna say Jesus by decision, guys, and I'm not confident. Next fighter we got Mike Hamill versus Kelly's Mota. Um Mike Hamill here, man. Um 80s dude. This guy <laughs> like when I when I see him, he's the epitome of 80s. Everything about him is 80s. The way he dresses, his uh what do you call it? Is is his haircut, his uh what do you call it haircut? Freaking I call it a freaking haircut. I mean, a little hair left in the back. I forgot the name. If, I mean, if you guys know the name of the haircut, just leave it down in the comment box for me. Um, I forgot the freaking name, man. What's the name of that freaking haircut, dude? Um, ah, damn, what the freaking name of that haircut is, man? I can't remember. But if you guys know the name of it, just leave it down below. Um, but it's with the hair, you know, the sides are cut, and then the whole back of it is like hair is hanging out from the back. Um, yeah. I feel that Hamill beat Burks, man, in my opinion. I felt he beat Burks. He went to a split, but I felt he beat Burks. I felt Burks probably won one round in that fight. Right? Um, Hamill is a grindy freaking wrestler, dude. He's a grindy, straightforward wrestler, and he's not going to give up. Um, he can get caught with shots, though. He's open at times, but he just keeps going and going and going, man. He's durable. And um, he will look for the submission or knockout. But he just keep pushing and he's insane with his pace. His pace is insane. But against a guy who can really strike and is good at striking and movement and can defend takedowns, we give him problem. I'm not sure if Motta can do that. Because what I saw from Motta <coughs> um, against um well against Derek Anderson. I mean he got caught there, but the kick was kind of like a it was like one of those controversial kind of vibe there, you know, like his knee wasn't down when he got caught in the face, but it was like he was kind of standing up, so it wasn't illegal. But, I mean, what I see from him, I mean, he could strike, but it look, from what I see, he, he, he can get taken down. And the pace from Hamill, man, the pace from Hamill is a high pace wrestling, man. A mullet, that's it. Hamill has a mullet. Okay, I remember, guys, his haircut is a mullet, all right? So he has a little thing on the back, the hair hanging out, a mullet, they call it. It's an eight, it's kind of that thing, that, all right? So, okay, I just remember now. So, Mota here, like I said, he's striking, is it's not bad. He's coming up out of Tashira camp there. And he has BJJ, and he's not a bad fighter. But, man, the pace from Hamill, though, man, I mean, you can't sleep on Hamill. I mean, this guy is, I mean, they match him up with... Pushman Nogomedov, which is a tough guy to fight. This is a tough. The, the guys that that they're, that they're matching, up, they're matching him up with, are tough guys. Boric's I felt he won that fight, and then, and Oshman is a. That, this guy's like a, a strong prospect, man. Fourteen and zero. This guy's a good fighter. So the guys he's fighting is not like easy fights, and he's like going to decision. He's actually winning fights and losing it by a split. So. I mean, Motta is going to have a 3 inch of reach. Um, he's going to have a 2 inch of height. We look for takedowns. We look for submissions. KO, TKO, and everything like that. And he's, I notice that he's flat footed, though. So that's that's why a flat foot like that he easily can get taken down. He doesn't really move around as much. And if he stays out like in front of Hamel, I can see Hamel just grinding, grinding, grinding. But Hamel got to look out for the submissions, though. But I'm liking Hamel for this fight, man. And I'm, and I'm going to say Hamel by decision. I just feel Hamel is just more craftier. He's fight for competition. Even though he lost, but and, and one of them he actually win, but he actually lost it. But you know, I'm I'm liking Hamill. I must say Hamill by decision, guys. But um, I'm not confident. All right. Next fight here, guys. We have um Kai Kamako three. Wow, 
<laughs> versus John D. Zeus. Kamako 3. This guy was in the UFC too. Um, lost against Jonathan Pierce and TJ Brown beat Tony Kelly there. Um, also, was, okay, he was in Bellator earlier too. Okay, so he was in Bellator from way back. So he never lost in Bellator. He's 2-0 and zero in Bellator right now. Um, and he went to, to a draw with Danny Chavez where he actually could have won the fight if he never got the illegal hits, eye poke, and uh, nut shot. So, yeah, happens, man, you know. I'm going to take points off for that. Um, Kai here, I feel Kai is, is, is more of a well-rounded guy here, man. Um, I feel like he will look to, you know, get the takedowns. He has a strong wrestling base there. He will gas out, though. If he paces himself, though, which I saw him doing in Chavez fight, if he paces himself, he can carry the fight. You know, when he when he goes out there and push too hard, he gasses out. But in Chavez fight, he made adjustments in that fight. And this is a fight where he could have won if he never got the points taken off. Um, I just feel like um, with Kai here, he's more active, more volume. You know what I'm saying? There's more activity from him and he can get the takedowns, right? His opponent here, John D. Zeus. Um, John D. Zeus here, um, he can get taken down. I mean, that's the first thing. He got a seven inch reach though, which is freaking massive. And he knows how to use it. You know, the guy's athletic. His, his striking is not bad. He pinpoints his shots with hit with a flying knee, hit it on the pocket with the straight. Um, but he's hittable. Even though he can strike, he's very hittable though, and he can get taken down. Um, he will also drop the ball, and his movement is not bad, but he does slow down though. And when he slows down, he just right in front of you, and you can hit him with shots, and he's just looking to counter. So all that time he's waiting to counter, 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 he's not throwing anything. So the other guy's throwing more volume, and he can just lose off of points, right? So he's just looking for that one shot. But if he gets it though, he can knock you out. Like, like I said, the guy has potential. I'm not here to disrespect any of the fighters, guys. Like I always say to you, you know, I mean, guys have the different skill set. I mean, I'm a counter fighter too, but it's good to throw a little volume in between, you know, throw a little more shots depending on the competition so you can build up the score if you don't get a knockout. If you're just like chasing for knockout and just waiting, 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 there's something called a clock. You know, in the sport, they got the clock and the time and everything like that and the rules. And the judging system so you know the five goal decision and Kai's like throwing leg kicks throwing legs and Kai does throw heavy leg kicks just throw leg kicks throw little punches here get take down get take down and then his Zeus is just waiting to hit him in one shot all the three rounds are done then who's gonna win the fight Kai right exactly so I'm liking Kai for this fight guys and I must say Kai by um I must say Kai by decision because more of a decision guy you know he's not really a guy that's gonna you know, he looks like he has knockout power, but he doesn't really... I don't think he has a knockout in any of his fights. I believe he, I believe he may have, like, one submission or something like that, but his, his finishing rate... His finishing rate is not high. He's only a decision guy. He has one by submission, see? Seven by decision, so... And his Zeus is more of the guy that would more likely look for the knockout. Five by kill and two by submission. But he can be submitted, though. That's why I tell you he can get taken down easily. And Kyle will Kyle will take him down. I guarantee you on that. Okay? So I like Kyle by decision, guys. Next fight here. We have Alexander Shalabili versus Bobby Lee. I know I mispronounced that. Uh, <laughs> Alexander here, man. Alexander's a solid dude. Solid guy. And his fight IQ, from what I see, it's pretty good. This guy's pretty well-rounded all the way around, man. His striking is not bad. And his wrestling is a strong point. But his striking also is decent. Again, this guy's record is not bad. Fighter come out of Fight Nights Global, ACB, Absolute Championship fights. This guy is a good fighter here. Not a bad guy, man. Um, I mean, the guy is pretty much all, all the way around. He's well-rounded guy. And he's a smart fighter. Right, good fat IQ. So this guy hardly makes a mistake. <laughs> so uh, I don't need to say nothing more than that. Bobby King here. Bobby King has more of a he has more of a boxing kind of vibe to him there. But Bobby King can get taken down. You know, Nick Newell is a pretty decent fighter, but Nick Newell was also taking him down. Okay, um, he has some missions here and there. Some have some arm bar and stuff like guillotine, but from what I see, like he's more of a he's more of a boxer in a kind of way. Um, I'm liking Shelby for this fight, and um, Shelby shouldn't lose this fight. And if he loses it, I'd be surprised. I said Shelby by KOTQ guys in the first round, 
and I'm confident in this pick, guys. All right. As far as confident pick. Um, next fight here, guys. We got Johnny Elbin versus Colin Honk Body. Um, Johnny Elbin here, very strong wrestler coming out of American top team, strong wrestling base, stays on you, grindy, striking has been getting better, crafty guy. Um, he's undefeated. I mean, guy is a good veteran here, man. He's pretty much good everywhere, man. His wrestling is very, very high level when he's at American top team, which is a good camp. Okay. Um, Colin here, from what I see from Colin, he's more of a he's more of a guy that's gonna look for the submission. Striking, in my opinion, is, is not that good. It's kind of suspect. Um, but he's more of a grinder. Um, like I say, he doesn't look bad on the ground and will look for the submissions. Has two reach, have two inch of reach there. But like I said, the striking to me he doesn't look that great. But if you take him down, you may get your neck and he may pull up a submission because he's looking for he's looking for that submission. So he doesn't really mind getting taken down. But against Elbin. Elbin should be able to can grind this guy out and avoid the submissions. Again, anything is possible. You can always get caught, but Elbin coming to the American top team. I was an American top team trainer. There's a lot of good prospects and good teachers at American top team that will that will set you straight in every little thing you need from the ground to the striking and everything like that. It's a good camp, especially for game planning. They make good the game plans, they will make it good enough for you. To go in there and implement it and be that guy but it's up to you though to pull off the game plan that they give you but if you follow the game plan you will definitely win your fight all right so i'm liking elbin for the win here and elbin fight iq is not bad so he he should listen to his corner and then he should get this win and i'm gonna say elbin by decision guys and i'm confident in display like i said colin is not bad but when i look at johnny El johnny elbin you know, the guy is a pretty good prospect and he's he keeps improving and getting better. All right. Um, next fight here, we have um, we have Hill versus Coggins, which Coggins here, I believe his brother was in UFC, who is his Justin Scoggins. I believe that's his brother. Um, Josh Hill here. Josh Hill is more on the back and the back, the back foot. He's more on the back foot here. He looks to counter, pick his shots, um, will look for takedowns, and mix it up pretty well. This guy's um his fat IQ is not bad, but he's always on a back foot though. So you can you can pretty much walk him down and land shots on him, but he's a smart fighter though. He's a sneaky guy, right? Against roughing studs, which roughing studs, like I told you guys, roughing studs do not sleep on this guy. Roughing studs is a very he beat Magomed Magadov, who was a top prospect. Also beat Keith Lee, and I got Keatley, right? I told you that Magomed could lose a fight, and he did. Stoggins is a is a is a good fighter, man. He's well rounded everywhere. Striking, ground game, his wrestling is elite, and you know um, he'll hang with him in there. But you know he'll on the back foot like that against starts starts gonna take him down, gonna keep grinding him out because that's what you know if you keep going backwards on a, on a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> dude he's just gonna double single leg you consistently and take you down and grind you off for the win but like i said with um josh hillier his, his iq is a good iq small fighter but i mean stutz i said this at a different level dude. it doesn't matter you know if the guy's on a different level and he's a skilled technical guy you know what i'm saying that you're not on that level even though you're trying to implement your game you most likely he may lose a fight, right? Scoggins here is making his debut here. Scoggins is more of a karate base like his brother there. Um, but he will look for takedowns though. I mean, he's not a he's not a bad fighter from what I see. You know, he's, his, his technique is not bad. He's pretty much pressure. He's pretty much on you. So, um, like I said, seems to have a karate base, which he does. Um, he will look for takedowns and keep the pressure on you. Making his debut here. Um, he could win this fight, and I'm not confident in this fight, guys, because I feel Scoggins could win. He could get a decision here. It's very possible. But I'm going to go with a Hill here, guys. And I feel Hill is just, I feel Hill is just a little more experienced here. But again, you know, Scoggins could come here and pull the wing off. So be very, very, very careful with this fight. Be very careful. Because, like I said, Scoggins could win it. But I'm going to go with Hill, and I'm going to say Hill by decision, and I'm not confident. All right? Let's keep going here, guys. Next fight here, we have uh, we have Emmanuel Sanchez versus Jeremy Kennedy, which is a pretty good fight here. Um, Emmanuel Sanchez here, um, I feel he's a better striker out of Rufus, right? Um, 
it's, he's going to be more hungry here because he's on a two fight losing streak. You know, he fought Pachuki Pitbull, who's a tough fighter. You guys know Pachuki Pitbull, champion or was champion until he lost to AJ McKee. He's been champion for a long time, okay, from 2017 or so. Yeah, so you know, Sanchez went to decision with that guy and. Um, Sanchez is not a bad fighter. Can get taken down though, depending on the guy is fighting, right? Um, if, if Kennedy comes in there and grinds, grinds with his wrestling, which he didn't do in his last fight, he could win this fight. So Kennedy wrestling, wrestling here hardcore would make a difference if Kennedy gonna win the fight or not. Um, but what I see from Kennedy though, man, I mean, from what he, from he what, what he did with Adam Burks, man. Yes, Adam 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 Burks, man. He didn't. Even, he pushed takedowns in the first round, and he kind of like just stopped, and he wasn't even doing anything. He was just getting hit with shots consistently. You know, like I said, Sanchez is gonna have the better striking, but you know, he just didn't do nothing against Burks. He was just there getting hit with shots, and then in the third round, I guess he got hit in the hit to the leg and he fell down. Then he started pushing his wrestling after that. He started doing reversals and trying to get Burks down. I believe he had Burks down until the clock ran out in the third, but it was still a bit too late. Right, um, Kennedy's a well-rounded guy, you know, will push it take down, just wrestling is more his thing, you know, he usually grind, grind, grinds, but he, he, he looks like he's starting to slow down now, you know what I'm saying, against Adam Burks, he just, he just didn't look good, you know, um, but like I said, if he keeps the wrestling on you, he could win a fight over Sanchez, he could, but man, just what, just what I see from him, man, against Adam Burks, I just, I, I just don't know, man, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like he could win, but if he's unable to take on Sanchez in this fight, I mean, then he's going to get pieced up on the foot. I can see Sanchez beating him with the punches. Um, I have to go with Sanchez here, guys. I feel Sanchez is a little bit more on the experience side, too. And um, Kennedy slows down, man, and his striking is, is not the level of Sanchez, in my opinion. So... I'm going to go with Sanchez by decision, but it's the next fight where I'm not confident because if Kennedy come in here and decides to like grind and just seriously freaking grinder, like going there and just push, push, push hardcore, he could pull off the win like what Max Bernal did. Because Max Bernal grinded in that fight. If he does what Max Bernal did, he could win the fight. But I don't know if he can keep that pace though. So I'm going Sanchez, guys, by decision. I'm not confident. Main fight on the fight, guys. Main fight on the fight. Main fight on the card here, guys. We got Sergio Pettis, which is an excellent fight. Sergio Pettis versus Koji Haraguchi. This is a good fight, guys. I'm very impressed with Sergio Pettis. Sergio Pettis is a very good fighter, and he has improved over the years. From the UFC, you know, he started as a young kid, and he got better through the years, you know. He learned a lot from some of his losses here, right? Nearly all his losses to um, Cejudo, to Formega, even to the Rob Fun fight, when Rob Fun freaking outboxed him. He learned a lot in that fight. And what he did against Juan Acoleta, which Juan Acoleta is a, is a pretty decent fighter, he showed that, man, his boxing got better, his head movement, his technique got better. I mean, he has a Taekwondo black belt base, right? And his wrestling got better. His take on defense, his scrambling. Pettis has improved a lot from his, from his last fights, man. The guy improved. He got better, and he has room. He had a lot of room to improve, right? Um, he's well-rounded, actually improved. That's reading from my notes here, guys. Um, he has a karate base here, kind of kickboxing base, mostly a Taekwondo base. Um, very skilled. Um, um, Sergio doesn't do too well um when it comes to um a lot of um strikers like strikers in a sense but when the guy has like a de kind of a decent striking with takedown he may not do as well in his earlier fights like like rob phone had good striking there henry sohudo picked up a more of a machine kind of vibe there you know he doesn't do too well uh ryan bonnet Alex Casuras has the, the technical elusive strike. It doesn't do too well, right? So against Haraguchi, that may be the case too. But he has improved though. That's the thing. That I know he has improved. And I've seen from his fights, he has improved, right? Um, he's going to have a three inch of reach here. And like I said, Pettis, he's, he's striking, his, his technicality, his whole game plan has gotten better, right? Um, Haraguchi here. Um, Harry Gucci here um, is, is a well-rounded guy, man. He was a champion in Bellator and then he left and went to um, Raisin, 
right, and became champion over there, and then he came back to Bellator. Um, he was also in the UFC. The only loss he had in UFC was just to Demetrius Johnson, who was one of the best fighters, right, in that division, right. Um, uh, let me see here. Um, this fight is going to be at 135. Um, like I said, um, Pettis is going to have a three-inch of reach. Harry Gucci did lose before he <laughs> he did lose to um to Kaya um, Ascorado in that fight. He did lose when he went over there and then he went back and then def defeated him, right? Um, I was going for Haraguchi in this fight. You know, Haraguchi more of a shorter can kind of karate style, coming to the American top team too. And I was going for him in the fight, but when I watched the fight against um, Kaya and even his last fight against Cadwell, which wasn't really his last fight, his last fight in Bellator, he hasn't really been that much active as much as Sergio Pettis has. Sergio Pettis has been more active, right? Um, but there, there is, you know, the way how he strikes, or the way, the way how he strikes now, he really throws everything hardcore into his strikes. More of a tie style now, so a lot, a lot of heavy leg, leg kicks, which can be useful because he can probably kick up Pettis' legs. A lot of leaping overhand hooks, so he kind of rushes in. And he's very, very, he becomes he's very, very explosive. And what I see from Pettis now, Pettis is more on like sidestepping, seeing the techniques coming in corner and setting up game plans with, with a lot of movement. So Haraguchi is a little bit more explosive, which can work because he can, obviously, if he can kick up Pettis' legs, then he can, you know, he can, he can be Pettis because Pettis won't be able to walk anymore, right? So I was back and forth. I had Haraguchi here when I watched a couple of fights of him and I saw what Pettis looks like now. I actually feel Pettis can win this fight, man. Even with the reach, the, 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 um, the three-inch of reach, I feel Pettis can win this fight. I feel Pettis can set up a, enough game plan coming out of um, Rufo Sport. He can set up enough game plan here to pull off a victory over Haraguchi. Kind of keep him on the outside, similar to what he did to Juan Aquileto, and get a win here. And Haraguchi will maybe go for takedowns, but Pettis' takedown defense has freaking gotten way, way like the kid... Like I said, when he started young like that, he was kind of green, but then he got way better. And then when there's room to um, improve, you know, then that's a good thing because he can improve. He, he was like 22, something like that, 23. And then he's like 28. You know, so he had all that little room there, four or six years to improve. And he got way better, dude. And like I said, I'm not saying Haraguchi is not a good fighter coming to the American top team. He is a good fighter. But I feel that Pettis is just being more active. And I feel Pettis has grown since and he's grown better, more technical, more skilled, more, I won't say more of the well-rounded, but his well-roundedness is showing more, you know, and it's, to me, it's a, it's a close, even fight. Haraguchi could win it as well as Pettis, and I'm not confident, but I'm going to take Pettis for this fight. I had Haraguchi before, because I was like, oh, no, Haraguchi, you know, if she's going to beat Pettis, but I'm like, hold on there. I keep watching more fights of Pettis. I'm like, yo, Pettis has improved. It's like, he's a, it's like he sees things now, you know. He looks for openings. He can see punches coming. He can sidestep. If you look at Haraguchi, he's leaping in a lot. He leaps and leaping, leaping, leaping. And when he leaping, sometimes he misses. And I think Sergio Pettis, if, if friggin' Rufus the kickboxer, if he watches his fights, and and they sit down and then analyze Haraguchi, come up with a game plan for him because he, he keep doing the same thing. So I'm liking Pettis, man, and I must say Pettis by decision, five round fight, but I'm not confident, guys. Quick look at the odds here, see what we're working with. Uh, all right, let's see what we're working with here. We're working with man, so we're working with. Um, that a fight you fell off. Um. Hamel here is, is a favorite now, okay. Uh, Hamel here is a, okay, even fight. Um, don't disagree because Motto could win this fight. It's an even fight. I don't disagree because Motto is a striker. He can strike and, if, and he has a grown game too. So if Hamel have a hard time taking him down, then pff, Hamel could lose the fight just by getting out striked. If the guy can stay on the, on the outside and then keep Hamel at the end of his punches and Hamel is like struggling to take him down which Hamel will keep on grinding he will try to get you down but Mata does has a ground game but Mata can get taken down but you just never know so even fight is fair enough end camp and Kuchimacho got Kuchimacho's favorite here um it's close fight it's, it's close to even I don't disagree can camp win of course but it's a close to even so I don't disagree um Moret and Spike, I don't disagree. 
I said it before, it's an even fight. I don't disagree. They got the odds on your right. Oh man, Jesus and Kamaka. Kamaka is kind of high here. I mean, Jesus is, is not bad, but I like Kai Kamaka, but I wouldn't have him so high. I probably put Kai and Kamaka maybe 160, maybe 150, close. Kind of close even, but I have Kamaka leading. Yeah, on the odds being the favorite. But uh, I could see Kamaka winning, but be careful with this one, guys. I think the odds on him is too high, so be careful. Because Jesus could win this fight. All right. Um, Shelby and Bobby King. Shelby is high, but I mean, like I said, that's my confidence. So I don't disagree, man. I mean, but I wouldn't put Shelby in too much parlors because it doesn't make even a difference to even do that. You know, you, you might as well go under, but like I said, Shelby should win the fight and it's a confident play. Um, Vincius D. Jesus, the next D. Jesus here. Um, is D. Zeus is 125, 118 because of the Tate on the wrestling, like I said, guys. And uh, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is an even fight. I don't disagree. You know, Trocelli, you know, like I said, he could, if he can keep the fight standing, he could win. You know, because his Zeus is kind of hittable. Even fight. Don't disagree. The odds in this, and this is pretty much, this is the first time I see the odds so accurate. Perf perfectly even fights. Um, Colin Huckleberry and Johnny Elbin. Elbin is high as hell. Uh, like I said, a Huckabelly, Huckabelly, Huckabody is not bad, you know, he could submit you. And if Elbin is not careful, he could get submitted. But I like Elbin and as my confident play, but he's, he's high as hell. So I would be careful. I wouldn't pick, put Elbin in too many plays. Maybe could even fade this because it doesn't really make a sense. The odds are too high, but Elbin is my confident play. That don't mean Huckabody, Huckabody cannot win though. So you got to be careful with this one, guys. You could maybe go on the dog a little bit here if you feel like it because there's a submission chance by Colin Huckabody. But I don't see it though. Okay? So I don't disagree with the odds. Um, Javid Scoggins and Hill. I don't disagree. I mean, like I said, Scoggins could win the fight. He could win the fight just as well as Hill can. But I like Hill. The odds is pretty much exactly how I, exactly how I vision it. Emmanuel Sanchez and Johnny Kennedy, Jeremy Kennedy. Manuel Sanchez, 170, 198. Um, I feel Sanchez is a little bit too high, but not too much there. I mean, 170 some sides, 190. I would say 150, one close to even. Almost, a, almost an even fight. I'm going to be, if I, when I think about it, almost an even fight. I think that's what I said. Close to even here, man, because Jeremy Kennedy, if he comes in here and grind hardcore, he could win. So, I take that back. I disagree with the odds in here. It's an even fight because if Kennedy can grind in this fight, if he comes in there and just grind and don't get tired, he will win because Sanchez can get taken down. Sanchez is the BJJ black belt off his back and he's good. But if he can't get the submission, then what happens? He's going to be on his back for three rounds and lose. And, lose. and Jeremy Kennedy is known as grinded. So when I see the odds here, man, I, I actually take that back. The odds in Sanchez is too high. So be careful. I see this more, and I said it is more of an even match. I did say that, right? Yep. And I have as a non, as I'm not confident. So um, be careful with that one because Kennedy could get a decision. Okay, be careful. Haraguchi and Pettis. Haraguchi is a favorite, like it should be. He was a champion over there, a champion in um, his other fight organization there, where he came out of. What's the name of it again? Um, I forget the name of it. Um, Reason. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, Harry Gucci is not a bad fighter, you know, but um, in my opinion, I like Pettis for the win here. Do I agree with the odds? Um, not really. I mean, from what I've seen from Pettis lately, I don't agree with the odds. I feel like it's, it's a lot more close, even though it's 1 in 60, but I feel like it's, it's a very close even match, and I feel Pettis can win the fight. So I feel like this is a more even match here, guys. So be very careful. I'm, I'm liking Pettis, but I could see Haraguchi also winning. That's why I say it's a close to even fight. Fast that I disagree with for the guys being favorites is Haraguchi, Sanchez. Um, I think that might be the only two. Um, Kai Kamaka, not really. I think Kai Kamaka should win that fight, but still he may be a little bit too high. So I'll just throw him in there too. So yeah, those are the only three fights there, guys. I see. Kai Kamaka. Um, Mariguchi and the Sanchez fight. So the, 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 the fights that I see, you know, there could be upsets here. I could see Sergio Pettis winning. I could see Kennedy winning. Um, 
Um, I don't really see his who's winning, so I'm not going to really say that because I, I see more Kai Kama coming in that fight. And yeah, that's about it. I can, I can see those two upset Kennedy and Pettis winning that fight. Yeah, and um, that's about it, guys. Um, like I said, guys, subscribe to my channel. Um, hit the thumbs up button, smash that thumbs up button. Guys can donate to the channel to help, help out the channel, to help me out, make better videos, and um, keep more consistent and get these videos out earlier. All right? Um, the more help I get with the channel, is the more time I can put into the channel. You understand? Also, um, subscribe to my Patreon account for all the uh, face off predictions, um, prop bets, and combination parlays. Right? UFC coming next, guys. The Aldo versus Front. That's going to be a good fight. Guys, keep on kicking. One love out to everybody. Oh,